Hello and welcome to a new series I will be doing, which is like a music roundup. I don't have a good name for it right now. If you got good names, put in the comments below, I guess. But basically, I will be covering like all the music that I've listened to in the month of February. And I'm going to start with the singles, starting with... Forgetter by Redbox. So this is the first of two singles from this month for their next album, uh, Afterthoughts. That's, um, honestly liking the singles for this album less than Visions, their previous album. Mm. With this song being like more mellow, which isn't really getting me to come back to it as often as some of the songs from that album. Mm, so, through this, I'm thinking about giving this song around a mid-7 out of 10. Of Next up is Waking Up by Storefront Church. <laughs> Waking Up is my first song I've heard by Storefront Church. However, they're notable for having a song in The Queen's Gambit, apparently, according to Spotify. But I checked this song out due to the feature of George Clark from Death Heaven on it, and it's pretty good, honestly. The orchestral parts of the song add to it, like, so solidly. And the, like, clean vocals that George does, which was, like, shown on their last album, uh, Infinite Granite, I think. Yeah, is what's called. All is, like, very clearly shown through this track, and... Honestly, I would recommend this song if you haven't heard it already, and I'm giving it a high 8 out of 10. Next is Ghost Again by Depeche Mode, which is their first song since 2017, and the first song since the death of band member Andy Fletcher, and honestly, it is a great return. Like, the bass, that, like the bassy synth that opens the song is great. The lyrics are really good. Uh, the pianos, oh, and synths that come in later on the track are really good. And like all of this, I'm thinking like a light nine out of ten. So up next is Lost by Linkin Park, which is their first single for the 20th anniversary of Meteora, like box set. And it's the first song to feature their vocalist Chester Pennington since 2017 and I think it's very good honestly he, and like just as good as some of the songs on like the original version of the album uh the music video sucks oh my god the music video is terrible there's like there's like some terrible fucking AI shit in that video it is awful well but like Continuing on the song, like the synths, the vocals on the song are really good. So I would give it around a solid 9 out of 10. And I'm excited for what else comes from the project. I've been playing by the rules and I just can't get... Finally for the singles is the second Red Vox single of this month, Playing by the Rules. And I think this is probably my second favorite single for the uh, album so far. It's got like a really good groovy feel. Everything lands together. I like the chorus. That final minute of the song is really good. And with that in mind, I will give this song a solid 8 out of 10. So now moving on to albums. Let's start with... Let's start here by Lil Yachty. I like this project but I think it is overrated so what I mean by this is like I like the psych rock like it is very more like a, a more experimental project for Lil Yachty like he's going into psych rock and he talks about like the hatred for his past albums but I don't know I just do not like the auto tune and I do not like how long some of the songs on this album feel like, a lot of songs feel the length they are when they have, like, heavy auto-tunes on them. It just does not interest me. 
I feel like all the inner instrumentals on this album are pretty good. And when the instru like instrumental isn't overpowered by the auto tune, those songs are pretty good. Also, the backing vocals on this album, they were really good the entire time. So yeah, I think this album is a light seven out of ten. War, a war, a war. Next is "This Is Why" by Paramore. It is Paramore's like post-punk album, if you could say. The first two tracks on it, uh, "This Is Why" and "The News," are really good. Like they're just strong, big singles. And it is followed by, uh, oh my god, I am forgetting the name. Running Out of Time, that is what it's called. That song is also pretty fun and groovy. But then it's followed by Komsekusa, which is kind of boring in my opinion. The opening of the song really reminds me of Banquet by Block Party. E. But then the next three songs are really fucking good. Like, uh, I forget their names off the top of my head. I didn't write them down for some reason. I should have. But I really like them. I think it's the final three songs. They're more like the slower side of post-punk, which eh, doesn't really interest me that much. Other than Crave. Crave is kind of like bigger, but eh. Just literally one of the weaker songs on the album. However, I think it is probably like the best that post-punk revival has been and is better than like everything like that has been made in the genre by like established bands in it like Block Party which I mentioned before and I think it's a light 8 out of 10. So next is What is Really Underneath by Code Orange. I honestly do not get why I listen to this album. So what I heard from like multiple sources was like this is like a companion remix album like Nine Inch Nails does for like a bunch of their old albums and I'm like oh I'm not gonna like this because I do not like any of those albums and I listened to it and yep it is exactly that it is just that for underneath and it just pretty much takes the good moments from underneath and kind of makes them into like electronic instrumentals that are kind of boring. I don't know, I just don't really like it. Uh, one really low point is the song uh, Prismatic Shame, which takes the song Who, Am I, Who I Am and just uh, kind of ruins it. <laughs> just puts a boring instrumental on it. Takes all the like hype parts of the original song and just isn't it. With that in mind, though, I'm giving this album a solid 4 out of 10. Up next is Skrillex Quest for Fire, and this is probably the most surprised I've been by an album this year. Because <laughs> it is a drastic turn from what he has made before, and that is a good thing in my opinion. Because uh, his old work I do not like. <laughs> I don't like it at all. But instead of like that big fucking heavy like bro step like synth blow your fucking ears out noise is more like a big heavy bass like sound. Uh, the album opens like on a great song, Leave Me Like This. Like the instrumental is good. The vocals are good. good with the instrumental. However, then it's kind of followed up with one of the weaker songs on the album, Ra Ta Ta, which is built off of two samples. Like, they're good, but eh. Just doesn't really work as well for me. And then up next is Tears. Tears is pretty good. It's a song with, like, sparse vocals. However, the instrumental on it is really good. Like, the sample on the album which is an impression of Navi. It's not actually Navi from Legend of Zelda. It is really good on the song. Then it's followed by Rumble and Butterflies, which are basically Skrillex working with like two different producers, specifically Fred again and Fortet, to make two pretty good songs. Uh, the vocals on Butterfly is, isn't as good as Rumble, but yeah, still really good. 
Good. And then uh, up next is Inhale, Exhale, and A Street That I Know, which are two songs similar issues, like, to each other. They have uh, vocals that aren't the best on the album. However, they have really good instrumentals. Then up next is Xena, which is a song, like, this is the only song on the album that isn't fully in English. And pretty much it shows how Skrillex can make a song in a different language still work with, like, the sounds he is working with. Mm -hmm. uh, another really high point is the remix of Too Bizarre. It's, like, insane. It's, like, hellish and high. Like, it uses literally one line from the original song to develop, like, half the song. And it's just, like... It is insane. Like, it takes all the elements from the original and just puts them into it. And I think it works really good. Uh, what's next? Uh, then there's Hydrate. Another song with... Oh my god, I forgot his name. Uh, he's on Rumble, though. I just can't remember his name. Same uh, rapper on here. Pretty good. But, and then uh, Good Space is probably the weakest song on this album. Uh, there's also a transition into it. There's two transitions on this album, which I'm not mentioning fully. Then there's a remix of the song Supersonic, which is really good. Like, the drop is really good on it. And then there's Still Here with the ones I came with, which closes the album on a pretty high note. And, you know, I like I said earlier, this album, like, insanely shocked me. I, if Skrillex continues on this path, that that would be a good thing and with that i am giving this album a light nine out of ten up next is don't get too close by skrillex and man this album <laughs> does not work at all the first half is like all right like i feel like this album is two halves like the decent first half and then the really bad second half. So, uh, like, the first track, Don't Leave Me Like This, is the same vocals from the first song from the previous album. However, they're just on a insanely boring instrumental. Then there's Way Back with Trippy Red and Pink Panthers on it. It's alright. Then there's two songs with drinking members, uh, Blady and Young Lean. They're good. However, then <laughs> the album takes a considerable nosedive after the song Summertime with uh, Kid Cudi on it. And then the next song, Bad For Me. Oh my god, that song is terrible. The vocals suck and then Chief Keef drops an <laughs> absolute garbage verse. Like, what was he thinking? And then the next song is 3AM, which has super high-pitched vocals. Vocals. And oh my god, what the fuck were you thinking when you released this? This shit is not good. But, uh, and then there's the title track of this album. Which I'm playing a portion of for the intro to this segment. It sounds like a fucking Jamster ringtone. And that's not a good thing. <laughs> there's, a, there's a really good tweet that demonstrates that that I'll link in the description. And with all of this in mind, I'm giving it a solid 3 out of 10. Up next is Shameless Suicide by Suicide Boys and Shake Well. And it is the latest release from Suicide Boys with every song on here featuring Shake Well. And I enjoyed this project more than their EP with Germ from last year, but less than their full length album from last year. Like, they're, like, all verses on this album are consistently good. I'm like, the first track is great. However, I'm not really feeling the next two tracks. Like, they basically have Rage Beats for instrumentals. Which, I'm not big on Playboy Cardi, so I'm not big on Rage Beats. However, the next three tracks are pretty good. And they help bring the album back. And overall, I would rate the EP a high 7 out of 10.
finally is the new Gorillaz album, Cracker Island. I was really excited for this album, like following the singles. Like I liked all of them. However, I did get a bit wary when the song Skinny Ape released. I did not really like that song. However, with the full album out, I can say it's probably the most disappointing Gorillaz album since the Now Now. Because none of the new songs on the album really landed with me, except for Tarantula. I thought that song was fun. Okay, my thoughts on Oil is pretty much I didn't land with it because I'm not huge on Fleetwood Mac. And Tormenta really did not fit the album at all because it is basically just a reggaeton Bad Bunny track on a Gorillaz album. And it just does not work with anything else on the album. Mm -hmm. Also, the promotion for this album was terrible. Like, pretty much it was like an entire year of waiting <laughs> for this album. And then it just got we leaked. Why did I say leaked? What the hell? It got leaked a week before. It got leaked a week before it came out. Good one. But honestly... I hope that the next Gorillaz album is like a big comeback. Uh, like they did with Now Now and uh, following it up with Song Machine. Hopefully the next Gorillaz album is better than this. And I am giving this album a light 7 out of 10. However, I feel like the album would be better with like the bonus tracks from the deluxe edition that released like the day of recording this. Cause like those song like those songs are like better or as good as the songs on the original album, like the songs Captain Chicken featuring Del the Funky Homo Sapien and uh, Controller featuring MC Vint Laden, like are better than like anything else on the actual album. Like uh, Controller is pretty much what the track with Bad Bunny should have been. Just, I don't know why it wasn't. Uh, there's also Crocodilas, which I liked, but I felt like it was similar in quality to the original album. And if I had to rank this with like the deluxe tracks, I would say it's like a solid seven. So that is it for all the main albums. However, if you want some more recommendations that didn't release this year, uh, I have The Seer by Swans, that's pretty good. This Dungeon Earth and Remove Your Skin Please by Chat Pile, there's two pretty good EPs by them. Uh, the single Ego slash Mirror by Burial Fortet and Tom York, really good songs. Sucks that they're only officially available on vinyl. I'm hoping they get released on digital. Uh, and then there's discographies I finished this month, I'll give some highlights from those. Uh, there's Linkin Park, which I would say Meteora... Uh, hybrid Theory and Hunting Party are highlights. I know Hunting Party is like a controversial take. That's not like the most popular album. And then uh, there's Modest Mouse, which I would say good news for people who love bad news. A Lonesome Crowded West, We Were Dead Before the Ship Even Sank, and The Moon in Antarctica are highlights. So with all of that, that is going to be this monthly roundup of music. And I will see you guys in the next video.